Okay, so this next building on our left is the Department of Justice. The building on the right on the next block is the FBI. Fuck the FBI! What do we say to the FBI? Fuck the FBI! What do we say to the FBI? Fuck the FBI! What do we say to the CIA? Fuck the CIA! What do we say to the CIA? Fuck the CIA! What do we say to the DOJ? Fuck the DOJ! Free Daniel Hale! Free Daniel Hale! Free Daniel Hale! Free Daniel Hale! Fuck Trump! Fuck Trump! Fuck Biden! Fuck Biden!
You guys have a permit number? Yeah. Uh, Kimber. Kimber. Do you have a permit number? Uh, the alley. What's going on here? Yeah, so uh, we just concluded the End the Damn Wars March. It's a post-partisan unity march to end the, end the over 12 military operations, occupations, drone strikes all across the country, the 83 military bases all across the country, the environmental destruction from our military, the collapse of indigenous cultures from our military, the death of our service members, and the absolute destruction of our economy from these pointless imperialistic wars that nobody asked for. Can you tell me about the kind of coalition aspects? Uh, who's, who's out here? Who's invited to be out here? Yeah, so uh, we, we have uh, members of the Libertarian Party, we have members of the People's Party, we had Max Blumenthal, we had Garland Nixon, in, uh, with the ACLU, I guess formerly of the ACLU now, because he just announced his recognition. Uh, we have conservative. Oh yeah, we have a bunch of conservatives here. We have a bunch of anarchist groups. Uh, the a couple of local uh, communist party people came from Michigan with me. The type of people you've seen on Ford Stream that always run around with me. The little Unity Coalition group. And uh, yeah, we all got together and, and did this thing. So um, there have been criticisms. In case you haven't noticed. Oh, oh, no um, way. It might Impossible. be nice to you that some people are upset about this event. Most um, people are. I wanted to ask you about, there's a criticism that I've seen that says something like, Boogaloo's are, you know, in favor of or preparing for some kind of revolution, which is like a type of war. So is there a contradiction implied by being a Boogaloo and then Yeah, yeah, it, it's kind of similar to how people criticize preppers. They're like, oh, you know, you're convinced the apocalypse is happening when some people just do that. It's the same thing with the Boogaloo movement of just like, we see what's going on in the country. I mean, there was a gunfight in Portland between Proud Boys and anti-fascists. Everything's going crazy. Joe Biden with the, uh, the vaccine mandates. Everything that's going on in Afghanistan, the Trump debacle and all of that. We see the country splitting and fracturing, and that's when we came into prominence. And the entire thing we've done from the very beginning is promote these kind of unity events. We showed up to BLM events. We showed up to you know conservative 2A rallies. We showed up anywhere we could to try to promote that you know, the realization, kind of the Assange message, that there are no good guys in government right now. And in fact, if we don't address this, if we do not solve this problem, you're going to increasingly get irrational people and desperate people. And those people will do violence. Those people will carry out attacks. Those people will hurt people. And it will get more and more desperate. You saw kind of at the height of COVID, of people rioting, of people looting, of people shoplifting just to stay alive. Obviously, like the whole Whitmer thing that happened. You're seeing people get desperate. And that's been my entire message from the beginning and a lot of my fellow people in the movement of like, hey, this is our last chance to come together and work and fix this issue. Because if we don't fix this issue, that's when the irrational things are going to happen. That's when the violence is going to start happening. If you thought the last year was bad, next year will be worse. It will get worse because our country is increasingly divided. And the only way to solve that is to do events like this, to get people to talk together. Not debate ideas, but put aside differences and focus on those single issues. And people obviously like criticize all the time that you want this, you want this. I don't, and that's the only reason I do all these things, but we're preparing for it, obviously, because we see it happening. And until we see people outside of us in different groups and events doing their own unity thing and addressing these issues and kind of having a Occupy 2.0, a general strike they're talking out of left, you're seeing libertarians talking about no compliance, all across the political board, if we don't get to that point, that's when people start bringing out guns, that's when people start looting, that's when people start hurting each other, like in Portland, stuff like that. So that's always been my message from the very beginning, is, is you know, it, ra rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war, but I have no, you know, never had any intention to do anything, I've never called for violence, I don't ever want violence. I'm obviously prepared to defend myself if it happens, but that's applies to most people, including the left even. You're seeing the armed left come up, so they get this more and more. And that's, you know, what the whole unity message, my whole unity coalition thing I'm trying to do is, a, is avoid the things they criticize me trying to start. So, What's next? What do you see as sort of the direction of uh, the rest of this movement or the movement super displayed? So yeah, so for End the Damn Wars, we're going to stay as an organization, and our primary goal is kind of to be the glue between all these groups. Because Code Pink might not talk to antiwar.com that much, you know, leftist anti-war movements. Like if there's a giant Palestine event, if we bomb Palestine or something again, they didn't reach out to the libertarians. But maybe now with us being a third party, we'd be like, hey, we can put the People's Party people in contact with some anti-war Ron Paul conservatives. We can kind of be this glue. And we plan on doing either semi-annual or annual events just like this and hopefully getting bigger and bigger. And then for me personally, and, and a lot of people in the movement, obviously the, the Vax mandate thing's crazy right now, and the 
who knows what the next couple weeks will come, but that's kind of the plan in the future. We're in support of ending the wars that we all know and have gone on for far too long for pointless causes that have not just drained our people of trillions of dollars, thousands of lives, but has been draining us of our human spirit of compassion. It's been turning our love into hate, and it's our time to stand up. To sum it up simply, we're just tired of this mindless chaos that serves no one but those above and puts everyone below under the bus. So I've seen, uh, there's one person out here actually with a Communist Party USA t-shirt, and I've also seen a Don't Tread on Me flag. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of the sort of coalition? I'm here? loving the broad spectrum of people coming out here. We don't have to agree with point A, point B, point C when you have literally point Z stabbing you in the gut. We're here as just human beings, free people that wish to see a change that will affect everyone in our country, left, right, middle, up, down. So I, I saw a skepticism on Twitter or criticism that said something to the effect of Boogaloo is, means like revolution or like war or something and this is an end of the damn So they were claiming that there's some kind of inconsistency well, I mean, between the Boogaloo and the Boogaloo. So I I've been in the Big Blue for a long time, did a lot more events than a decent amount of folk. And I'm here with the basic idea, I never want the Boogaloo War, I never want that revolution, I fear it. We're trying everything we can, honestly, to stop it. And we are afraid that if it must come down to a fight, that the good people will be out there. And we know that, that's why we put ourselves together, but it's not something we want. We're not trying to start a war. We just hope if it comes to it, we're the ones that will be able to finish it. What, what would that actually mean? Like in practice, what are you talking about? Freedom. Just, it would break down to any government rule that is oppressing anyone's natural born unalienable rights and we'll be free again. And I hope that it doesn't take a war to get to that point. I hope that we can use the courts, the systems, and everything at our disposal, civil defiance, just coming together and uniting. I hope that will throw off that conflict. Talk about kind of the coalition that's formed out here. Yeah, uh, my name's Andrew Smith. I'm the co-founder and one of the organizers with Action for Assange. Um, I was invited by the organizing team for End the Damn Wars to join in with their events, so I'm super grateful that I was able to help out and get this built with them. Um, but the, the goal, as always, is to move towards not just a general strike, but a new civil rights movement. Um, because all of these issues, whether it's ending the wars, freeing Julian Assange, securing health care as a human right, um, the ability to have medical decisions and control of your own biological processes, um, privacy and uh, Basically, ending the effects of the intelligence community on our society are all core issues that interrelate, and one can't be tackled without the other. Because, for example, if Julian gets prosecuted and the U.S. says, no, you cannot publish information embarrassing to the federal government, you can no longer take a legal stand against most of the issues that we're all fighting to secure. Um, so that's why I see ending the wars as such an important thing, because it's all interrelated. Julian wouldn't have had to have published the documentations revealing the crimes of war if there were no crimes of war to have been committed. Um, my next big hope, honestly, is to be able to take on the Patriot Act. Um, because that's a legislation that continually gets rolled and renewed, so there's no reason why we can't get on the ground action built demanding that it just stops. Um, so I appreciate Ford Fisher, I appreciate all of the organizers that are out here. Um, Franco from the MCSE network and Frank Analysis is out here with us, and a bunch of other media people that I have no idea who they are. Um, so if you're someone that's watching at home but feels inspired to, to do anything, um, just do what you can with the time and money and resources that you have, because this is the opportunity and the time for us to change. Can you tell me about the coalition out here? I've heard people describe it sort of as a strength that there's a lot of different perspectives out here. I've also seen criticisms like online of like, oh, you guys are working with those guys, that sort of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. What's your sort of perspective on the guys that are out here? So, I'm, a, I'm an Assangeist. I can... And the, the quote that I use to describe all of this is one that Julian gave in 2009 when he said, all political ideologies are bankrupt to a greater or lesser extent. Um, so to me, I don't care who you are. I don't care what ist or ism that you're assigning yourself to or that others label on you regardless of if it's true or not, like in Magnus's case. Um, the thing that we care about here in this moment is ending the wars. 
that's not a socialist issue, that's not a capitalist issue, that's not a libertarian issue, it's not a green issue, it's not a people's party issue, it's not an independent issue. It is literally a principled stance of ending the wars. And if people come here and they find a libertarian and a green party candidate and an independent and an MPP member and then a complete anarchist all coming together for the exact same words, end the damn wars. We can do it for so many other things. We've done it for Julian Assange. Today was our very first event doing this, and we have 13 events around the United States, including this one, and we have about six international events as well. So this is the very, very start of the new era of the anti-war movement. So are you intending to keep this coalition area events in the future? Yes, absolutely. We intend to keep growing. Um, we do de-organized uh, uh, organizing. So. So I uh, decentralized, sorry. So we don't have, there's no leader. There's no one here that's barking orders to a dog that has to run and fill them, right? We have people around the country that said, yeah, I want to end the damn wars. My event's going to take place here. Come join me. Um, in Arizona, it's a combination of the Libertarian Party, the Green Party, the Movement for a People's Party, the Socialist Independent Party, and the Communist Party in Arizona, all coming together because we care about the issue of ending wars. It's not about the ists or the isms. So what we hope is that people can come together around these issues, fight like hell, march for an hour until they're exhausted, and then when they don't have the energy anymore, they can sit down and have the debates about economics and the debates about um, health policies and all of these things, because that's secondary. Those ists and isms, we have no control over any of the financial means in this system. So why do we put that as a stumbling block before we end the war? So we're used to uh, organizing smaller Assange actions and we've been working with people across the party lines for a while. But we were realizing while we were organizing that there's like this huge gap between our message of uh, ending the prosecution of whistleblowers, journalists, and activists, and with what's going on with the wars and our intelligence agencies. And, you know, I don't really, I wasn't really thinking like I would have to be the person to do this or anything like that. It was that we were just interested, like maybe somebody should start something for September 11th. So it's just a couple of us. We had a discussion, like, hey, this sounds like a good idea. And then we found, uh, found out that a lot of people thought it was a good idea. So they started to decide to do actions in their states and their cities. And then it just kind of took on a life of its own. So now we have somewhat of a little baby anti-war movement that we're trying to grow. But with uh, everything that had happened with Joe Biden saying he was going to pull out of Afghanistan by September 11th and with everything going on in Palestine and and it's just never ending. So it's like 20 years, it's been long enough. We need to make sure that something's happening, even if it's just like a couple of us. We can't just sit and let the 20th anniversary of 9-11 roll around and not do anything, so. Thank you, I appreciate, I appreciate you guys organizing this. It's pretty cool, so thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Check, 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 check. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna give a little couple closing remarks. We're gonna thank everybody that came up, and we're gonna get out of here. A couple months ago, I would have never imagined to see this massive, diverse group of people shutting down the streets of D.C. and yelling, fuck the FBI, in front of the FBI headquarters. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's amazing, and like I said at the park, I hope you saw what you did here, and you take it home with you. You reach out to your local Green Party, you reach out to your local Libertarian Party, you reach out to the People's Party, you reach out to everyone around you. Your local, your local organizations. If there isn't an anti-war movement, you start an anti-war movement. That's all that happened here. Me, Kimber, Andrew, and maybe three other people sat in a room and said, huh, there should be an anti-war movement. And here we are. That's the power you can do. That's the power you can have. We want to replicate this. We want you to take this home. We want to build this. We want the 2006 anti-war movement back. We want it post-partisan, we want it aggressive, and we want to demand an end to these wars that have been going on my entire life. So I want to thank all of you for coming out. I want to thank the People's Party people and Nick Brown and everybody for coming out. Max Blumenthal, Garland Nixon, Scott Horton with the LP. Everyone who's come out, everyone who has spoken, you're amazing, you're beautiful. See you later, Scott. <laughs> Y'all have a wonderful day. Woo! One more before we leave. On three, end the damn wars. One, two, three. End the damn wars!